What's up beloved, this is Mandala on Mandala Loves Jesus and the topic of today is full of the Holy Ghost. I want to read from the Bible, King James Version, Luke 4, 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. I want to speak only about where it says Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. Now, how did Jesus get filled with the Holy Ghost? Jesus fulfilled all righteousness when he was baptized in the river Jordan by John the Baptist and he received his inheritance which is the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of God the Father that is given over into his hand like the senior founder of a company gives all the power or the executive power of the operations into the hand of his son which in this case is God the Father that gives all power into the hand of Jesus so the heavens were closed the third heaven specifically was closed unto this moment since the fall into sin and then Jesus received the Holy Ghost coming down upon him like a dove it's not saying it was a dove it appeared like a bird like a dove that came down unto him and it not only come upon him but also the Holy Ghost entered into Jesus and stayed in Jesus and that's what I want to talk about today that there are people that are inspired by the Holy Ghost which means that the Holy Ghost is coming closer to you like a cloud that inspires you and if the person is sanctifying uh, herself the Holy Ghost is considering if he will dwell, if he will take address in this temple. So basically God is observing a person that is getting, drawing closer to him. And by, in this time you get through a, an evaluation by the Most High God. And if the Most High God approves of you, the Holy Spirit ends up dwelling in you and entering in you and staying in you. But if you are, for instance, seeking for truth and you are starting to help other people and you are starting to look for God, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit comes closer to you and inspires you like a cloud that surrounds you which is the opposite to uh, to people that feel like they have a rainy cloud up, uh, above their head like they are always feeling down and they are always depressed and they always have bad luck and so the Holy Spirit is the opposite of the demonic oppression that people that belong to the world have except of course the servants of Satan that are freed of the rainy cloud from Satan and Satan um, gives power and goods, worldly goods and spiritual goods to the people that are serving him but Satan in comparison to the Holy Spirit is always uh, needs to have sacrifices and blood flowing all the time there is nothing that he can gift to you there are no gifts everything is a business I, I give you this if you give me that 
So there needs to be a permanent exchange of goods between the Satanist and his uh, evil master. And in contrary, the Holy Spirit gifts are given as real gifts. That mean that means that God doesn't make a business out of gifts and that grace of God has nothing to do with worldly sense of business or worldly sense of love because worldly sense of love is evil love and always turns out like you give me this if I can get that and that's just like a contract like many uh, fiancés and their uh, couple are managing their own lives so the, you have on one side the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that comes closer to you like a cloud and inspires you and on the other hand you have people that can get filled by the Holy Spirit like for instance you pray for someone for deliverance and when you end up the prayer you pray that the Holy Father the Living God fills up this person with the Holy Spirit and then depending on the condition of the heart the Holy Ghost stays there or just puffs out like smoke that is um, coming off a stage if you have ever seen like this smoke machines on on the live concert that's basically how it works when a person is receiving a Holy Spirit prayer from a reborn Christian so you fill up this person after praying for deliverance with the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost fills up the person in the moment but then it's like the smoking machine that fills up the stage and then comes fresh air from the side and the smoke is just uh, carried away and it's not staying there so many times if the heart condition is not according to the requirements of Jesus the person only feel lighter for that moment but the next day the person gets up and fa falls back into its sinful life or falls back into stealing falls back into lying falls back into pornography or lust or whatever the typical problems of this world vanity pride etc so the the Holy Spirit is carried away and leaves you like when the wind blows away the smoke from a stage but a reborn Christian that is baptized by Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit is baptized with the Holy Spirit dwelling and staying in the reborn Christian this person has a spirit that is alive like when you have a dead tree and then a sprout comes out of the dead tree that's the new creation that Jesus made out of this person when you are getting baptized in the Holy Spirit um, and this dwelling of the Holy Spirit is like having the smoke machine inside of you generating fresh air permanently generating fresh air permanently and it's not like uh, when you pray for someone and he receives the uh, temporary portion of the whole of the Spirit of God and then the wind takes it away because it's really the sins and the justice of God that takes away the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit will not stay in an unclean and unsanctified temple or in a temple which which is a person 
is content staying in a sinful life and not not turning away from sin. So that's what's happening when you are getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. You're having the the machine inside of yourself that's permanently generating fresh air or with the words of Jesus living waters that stream out of the belly which are the living waters that come from Jesus he sends you the Holy Spirit as the Father has sent the Holy Spirit to his son when he got out of the water when he was baptized and that's why later in Luke 4 18 Jesus says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight of the to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord and that's really what anointing means. Messiah is the anointed one of God. That is what the word Messiah really means. It is a title. You are the anointed one. You are one that is anointed with oil. And the expression anointed with oil means anointed with spirit. Filled up with the spirit but not only filled for one time purpose but filled up with my spirit with the spirit of the father and having a permanent and eternal regeneration of this oil every time that you are seeing the expression oil or anoint anointment or anointing in the Bible then it's talking about being spiritually and also the anointing of the person is influenced by how you use the tools that Jesus gave you. The more you use the gifts you have, the more anointed you get from God. And the less you use the gifts that you have, the drier your anointing gets until you're running out of oil. And when you're running out of oil, you have to buy it. But as long as you are having a, a, the living waters running, as long as your oil flow is not dried up, and as long as you are in circulation, as long as the motor runs, God himself makes sure that you are not running out of anointing and that your machine has sufficient oil to run smoothly. But that depends on how, how strongly and how earnestly you are sanctifying yourself. You see, um, holiness and righteousness is key. If you're living unholy, if you're living unrighteous, you can't be an effective tool and when you are stop using the talents that God gave you, you, uh, you stop also the income of fresh oil that your lamp needs to burn. And there are multiple Bible verses about this, like the parable of the virgins with the lamps, uh, running out of oil, not, not, not being anointed, not the not so the unwise virgins that had to buy oil in the end, and also the verses that talk about the parables of the one that has will have in abundance, and the one that doesn't have will have also taken away what he had. All this has to do with how you are managing what you have. Also the verses 
who much is given, much will be required, and who has little, little will be required. Um, and also, if there are many things trusted in your hands, and you are not, and you are having a broad conscience, and you are not obeying the Lord, you will get heavily chastised. But if your conscience is very small, if your perception of your sin is very low, you will get fewer stripes and you get more long suffering from the justice of the Lord. If you do not have the Holy Ghost, strive with all your strength to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit because if you are not alive in the Spirit you don't have anything when you die. Because if you're alive in the Spirit that means that you have Jesus when you die and you are good. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you don't if you are not if you are not a living spirit, if you're dead in spirit, if you are a dead spirit, then you are complicated when you die. Because if you because if you are if you are alive in the spirit you are one of the saints of the Lord that belong to him and when you die you will be received by the Lord himself as the verses say that he himself will gird himself to serve us at the dinner that he has prepared for us the ones that obey him and do the things that he wants us to do but if you are not reborn in the spirit and you're only believing in the son of God then you are I, I wouldn't say it's impossible that you get saved but you are in the gray on the gray ground and there will be a lawsuit going on about your soul where the God's justice will determine if you if your soul gets saved and if you are passing through the process of being reborn when you die or not and if you don't believe in Jesus and you never heard of Jesus but you are fulfilling righteousness according to your conscience and you are sharpening your conscience all your life then your thoughts are excusing or not excusing themselves on justifying or not justifying themselves and this will hold in the charging of your soul for or against you so if you never consciously reject the Jesus and you lived your life as a just man then you shall live but if you heard about Jesus and you rejected the Son of God and you rejected the gospel and the Lord sent you a true testimony of his gospel and you rejected it then you are condemned as John already said and if you have the Holy Spirit then you should avoid at all cost to lose the Holy Spirit because if you quench the Holy Spirit you are quenching the flame of your lamp and if you're running out of oil and if if you're not able to buy more oil and if you are quenching the flame so it goes off and the Holy Spirit leaves your temple that's because somehow you have blasphemed against 
the most high God. And there is no turning back if you go so far. But if you are worried, if you have blasphemed against the Holy Spirit, that's the most secure indicator that you haven't blasphemed because when you have blasphemed you are not worrying anymore because you are already so lost that you normally think that you will gain the war against the most high god which is nonsense of course but the prideful witches satanists and even satan himself they don't want to accept and they don't want to see the truth that they don't stand a chance against the Most High God. So they think in their craziness that they can destroy the throne of God which is impossible. So I hope you have a good evening. Be blessed in Jesus' almighty name and see you next time. <laughs>